Man calls police to turn gun in. Gets killed by police. A man shot with hands up while attempting to give guns to cops. Well, just 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 one gun to the cops, I'll say. So this is your I State I Talk of the Day. My name is Paul Gordon. Welcome to your I State I Talk of the Day. I want to let you know in advance that I'm going to be telling you a tale that uh, you may find a little incredible. You may find a little hard to believe. But I have video at the end, so keep watching. Because at the end, I'm going to play you the video, and I'm going to let you be the judge. Am I being hyperbolic? Am I overreacting? You tell me. 29-year-old Ruben Galindo of Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina, decided to call the police and turn in his gun to them. So he called 911 to attempt to arrange for him to hand his gun over to the police. And this act of self-pacification turned into the last decision Galindo would ever make. According to his wife, Azucena Zamoraro, Galindo had decided that he no longer wanted the firearm to be in his home. So he called 911 with the hope of arranging to have his firearm uh, taken from him by the police. The 911 dispatcher, upon hearing this request by Galindo, well, asked him if he had any other guns. And he said, hey, I, I don't have any other guns. After about a 15-minute conversation during which Galindo informed the police that he had his gun in a bag, the dispatcher decided that the cops would come to his house to retrieve the gun. So by the dispatcher's reckoning, the best route would be for the cops to just go ahead and come to his house to, to pick up the gun. So Galindo agreed to having the cops come to his home. He also informed the dispatcher that he had no bullets, none in his gun. Not only did he not have bullets in his gun, he actually told them that he had no, no bullets at all for his gun. So there's, there's no bullets. He's saying there's no bullets at all around and as the minutes went by while the, the police the police were en route the dispatcher assured galindo that the police were only going to his home to help him they have a very very tragic way of helping him so at one point in the call there was some confusion as the dispatcher appeared to tell galindo to leave the weapon and the dispatcher uh, I think what the dispatcher meant was leave the weapon in the house when you go out to meet the police. But Galindo, he didn't quite understand that. So she, when when she said uh, leave the weapon, his response was C. And I think you can kind of draw the conclusion that in his mind, leave the weapon meant, yes, go. Go take the weapon to the cops and leave it with them which is what he wanted to do from the start, which is why he called the cops in the first place. But when the police arrived, well, they did so with guns drawn, prepared for battle. And you'll see this in the video. Now, mind you, Galindo had called 911 and requested the police come to take his gun from him. So why, why? Would the police be arriving at his home in what appears to be battle preparation mode? That was the first mistake by the police who, uh, it would seem, appear to be afraid of the mere mention of a gun. Even one that a quote-unquote citizen appears ready to turn over to them. Even one in which the citizen made clear had no bullets in it. But seeing a man walk outside his home was enough to spring the well-armed and well-armored police into action. They pulled their guns out immediately, going into threat mode, and yelled at the man, the man who had called them to take his guns from them, manos, meaning, meaning hands. And, and these folks, these cops, these weren't dressed like 
peace officers. No, these were we, these were were dressed like ninja military, as the police are, are often want to do. They dress in military gear, all in black, and I'm sure all of them get get quite a thrill out of dressing in their military gear all in black and showing up at a man's home who, who called you to have his gun collected. So as soon as Galindo heard the word manos, what did he do? Well, and, and you're going to see it in the video. He immediately put his hands up in the air. So some officers shouted at him to... Uh, to throw the gun down while another yelled at him to put his hands up. Now, picture, if you will, there's a lot of noise going on. There's confusion. You got you got three or more dudes with guns pointed at you, yelling at you different commands. And uh, I would say, apparently, this guy is, his English is is not so awesome in the first place. This is the situation that you're going into. And this is how you chose to conduct yourself. So he still put his hands up. You can clear, clearly see it in a video. And just seconds later, an officer decided that the mere appearance of a gun, a gun that a man had called his department to turn in, a gun that the man had informed the dispatcher had no ammo in it, a gun that was up in the air, not pointed at anyone, not threatening anyone, it was enough to warrant firing on the man killing him almost instantly. I am willing to bet that these little, I'll just say these individuals, have a protocol that they follow. And I'm sure they have a protocol. Here, tell them, you know, if they got a gun in their hand, you know, tell them to drop it. And if they don't drop it within three seconds, kill them, kill them dead. I'm sure it's something like that. As could be expected, Galindo's family came out grieving, angry, in shock. The police naturally pulled their guns on the family. I say naturally because the police have a Fallujah occupier state mentality. They naturally pulled their guns on the family because, you know, how dare a family grieve? How dare a family get angry at cops for killing a man who was simply trying to turn his gun in? The man who murdered Galindo? Well, I want, I want you to remember his name. Remember his name very, very well. His name is Officer David Guerrero. Now, this is a man who apparently must have been firmly indoctrinated by the progressive culture to embrace a fear of guns. Now, the chief of police in Charlotte Beckenberg? I think you need to remember his name, too. His name is Kerr Putney. Now, this man apparently never saw an unjustified killing because his response to the shooting was, and I am quoting him, I'm not going to second guess how, well, his officers perceive a lethal threat. Oh, yeah, stand behind your guys. It's more important for you to stand behind your guys. These are the guys that have been given a magical power that none of us have. It's the power of life and death over people. The power of life and freaking death. And you don't want to second guess them? You don't want to ask, was that a justified killing? Apparently this guy, he doesn't even want to ask the question. So when a man calls your department to hand in his gun and complies immediately when someone tells him to put his hands up in the air, you don't immediately open fire. You don't do that. That's basic human common sense right there. And I, I don't know what the fallout will be from the murder of an innocent man, a man who was clearly demonstrating his willingness. See, that's the thing. This is a guy, he was more than willing to pacify himself before the state. Your little indoctrination worked on this guy. This guy came to believe that somehow people with magic badges should be the only ones with guns because he was willing to turn it in. He was the person that you want us to be. 
that wasn't good enough for you. I do know this. Were I a resident of Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina, I would feel singularly unsafe knowing trigger-happy Officer David Guerrero was patrolling the streets. You don't want to show this guy a picture of a gun. He will open fire on you. This is a man who apparently shoots you if you're even holding a gun. A gun not pointed at him. A gun he was sent to retrieve from a man who was voluntarily giving it up. I, I would love to know the record of this guy. I can't believe this is the first time he did something so egregiously horrendous. And if he didn't, then maybe he's not on, had not been on the force long enough to have done something else. So I would not feel safe knowing that the police department, with all the lethal force it was permitted to use, with all the power of the state behind it, was being run by a police chief. That's right, being run by a police chief, his name, Kerr Putney, being, being, being run by a police chief who saw nothing whatsoever wrong with one of his officers murdering a man who had his hands up in the air and had called the police to turn in his gun. A gun he told you was without bullets. I'm going to wrap this up after I play this video. So we've got three perspectives here in this video. And what you're going to notice is for all three of these perspectives, they're coming uh, with their guns up before this man ever exits its, his home. They are preparing for war before this man ever steps foot out his door. Here's the first perspective. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Family comes out, listen to how hysterical Let me see it! Your loved one has just been killed. Hold your position. We're good. Hold your, hold your position. Now we're going to about ready to segue into the second perspective. And this is actually going to be the shooter's perspective. And you can see what he saw. He saw the man raise his arms. After the man raised his arms, this guy fired. Ruben. Ruben, Policia, Manos, 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 put it down, drop the gun, drop the gun, do it now, drop the gun. Shots fired, shots fired. Shots Love down. it when he says shots fired. Drop the gun, drop the gun. Stay inside, stay inside, inside, get 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 inside, you just killed their family member. If you didn't have the full weight of the state behind you, these folks would be perfectly justified in answering what you just did to their loved one. But you have the whole state behind you, and they know it. And you know it, too. Now let's see the, the third perspective. It looks like this guy looks like he's taken some sort of sniper position, this last one. We're, we'll, we may hear a little bit of uh, more screaming at the family for being hysterical because you just killed their loved one. Get inside! Get inside! Get inside! And here's the sniper's perspective. Hands up in the air, fire, shots fired. And the police chief responds to that. Well, I can't second guess my my, my people as, as how they feel. Don't move! Get back inside! Get inside! Get inside! Get inside! 1312, give us 33 traffic. We got people inside coming out. So there. And there you go. Now you judge for yourself. Now 
uh, seeing that video, the I don't know how many times I've watched it, but uh, I'm not sure quite if they were in their full military regalia. They may not have been. Doesn't look like the the one guy was, but but certainly they approached the house from three different angles. They they had their guns drawn and ready as they approached that house, and the man. The man who fired the shots called out his name, Reuben. He called him by name, Reuben. Gave the man, the man raises his hands, and he immediately fires on him after he raises his hands. And to that, the police chief says, well, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to second guess how my officers perceive a lethal threat. No, no. No, no, we, we, we don't want to do that. I mean, if you're going to live in a society and what you're going to create through the course of enterprise, this institution of policing in which you empower individuals with shiny badges to make life or death decisions over us, heaven forfend if we question their judgment of whether they were facing lethal force or not. My God, if you live in that city and you are not totally outraged, I have... I, I, I don't know what to say about you. I don't know what to say about you if you're just driving to work every day or walking the streets every day and you know that's the police department that has guns that can legally kill you if they quote-unquote feel like they are being threatened. That's what you're dealing with. I'm going to wrap this up. I could go on. The moral of the story is this. Don't disarm and uh, except in incredibly rare occasions, never, ever, ever call the police. You might be calling Officer Guerrera or Gu Guara, and his chief might be Kerr Putney, two men not fit to have the power of life and death over any human being as if, as if any of us really are. So there you have it. That is your iState talk of the day. My name is Paul Gordon. As usual, make sure that you like, share, comment. I'd love to hear what you thought about the video. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash iState. And if you're going to subscribe, you might as well hit that bell right next to the subscribe button so you know the next time we make a video. Because you will not see us and we will not see you until... The next time we make a video.